read about the Health Hero Awards on the Daily Mail on my iPhone in an appointment waiting to actually see Mr Albert and I nominated him for his caring, supportive approach to children and the fantastic work that he does. I'm going to chat to Mum and just wait till Dad gets there. The first thing you think about with a hero is someone, uh, you know, rescuing children from burning buildings or something. But I did know about this and I thought it was going to be fantastic for the team, fantastic for the hospital, fantastic for the NHS in general. But uh, the children here really are the heroes. When Mr Albert was caring for Theo, he gave him 100% care. He would come in on a day off, ringing up, checking up on him, always at the end of the telephone. He would come and sit down with us every single week that he was in to give us an update, answer our questions, our concerns. Theo spent three months on his ENT ward and that three months we felt he was the safest he ever was. Theo was a young lad who started off with a relatively minor airway problem which progressed and involved lots of other symptoms and uh, parts of his body and in the end he was really struggling but always smiling through it and his family I think were amazingly supportive and eventually he came to you know, a really difficult time in his life where one had to make some sort of end of life decisions and you learn a lot about your team and you learn a lot about the parents in those kind of times. It is a very devastating effect on the whole family, not just myself and my husband, it's, it's brothers, nannies and granddads and the rest of the family as well. And of course the ultimate tragedy was that their daughter has now got a similar but milder form of the same thing. Gabriella is a delight to have, however we always have at the back of our minds that Theo passed away and this could subsequently happen to her as well. However, with the team here looking after her and being able to support us, we feel that we can get through this and we know they're only a phone call away if we didn't have an emergency with her. The aspect, I suppose, of the paediatrics which appeals to me is that interaction between the family and the children. I, I love working with kids, which is one side of it. And you have to, have to communicate, not only with the children, which is at one level, but also with the parents. When the kids are sick, it's very much a support role. Taking all of that out. He's very good at making you feel at ease. You feel that you have confidence in him and his ability. And he's great with, with Katie, my daughter, because she's been quite anxious about doctors and because she's had ear infections and, you know, to her, doctors equal hurt and pain. So when she met Mr Albert, he really was very good at spending time with her, getting her to do colouring and drawing and sort of relating to her on her level. Mr Albert is one of the hardest working surgeons I've ever known. He's been at the forefront of paediatric EMT for a number of years now. He's one of the first surgeons in the UK to do cochlear implants, one of the first surgeons in the UK to do laryngotracheal reconstructions. He's always running around, always trying to do everything he possibly can do, particularly for his patients. Clarity is important. One of the things I try and do is to make little diagrams and give those to the parents. I think that's really helpful with their decision making. And I think that across the team it's important to be consistent. He's dedicated he goes above and beyond his call of duty. If a child needs him, he will drop whatever he's doing to go and be with that child. I'm delighted for David because it's a, a recognition of all the very, very complex work that uh, he and the entire ENT team does. It's very timely for the NHS to have some positive story for, for the staff and for the families. You know, my parents are both in the NHS, my wife's in the NHS, I'm in the NHS, my daughter's a medical student, and I think that the core values are really unchanged.